Hello everyone. My name is Abhishek and welcome back to my channel. In today's video, we will learn the difference between CPU and GPU. We will also try to understand why GPUs are very commonly used in the world of AI, ML, deep learning, etc. A lot of subscribers on the channel wants to transition into the ML ops role. This is a very basic thing that you need to understand to start your journey with ML ops. I'll try to explain as simple as possible. So please watch this video till the end. If you look at the textbook definition, you know, the textbook definition says GPUs are preferred over the CPUs when you want to perform parallel execution. But what does that exactly mean? To understand, let's go a step back and start with the architecture of CPU. So if you look at the high level architecture of CPU, you have a control unit, you have arithmetic and logic unit, and there is cache. For example, if you write a Python program and when you execute this Python program, initially the program is stored in your hard disk and then it goes into the RAM from there, you know, control unit pass this program, which is set of instructions, right? What is your program in general? A program is nothing but set of instructions. Let's say you are writing a program for addition of two numbers. So you are giving an instruction to your uh, CPU where your ALU will process this instruction. So this is a traditional or legacy CPU example that I've taken where assume this is the architecture and your Python program instead of a simple addition. Let's say you have written a Python program of multiplication of arrays or some matrices, two dimensional arrays or matrices. Now, instead of one instruction, let's say you have 100 instructions. So the legacy CPU will perform each and every execution sequentially. So after the first instruction, the second instruction is executed, then the third instruction is executed. So CPU takes a lot of time to execute this Python program, which is multiplication of matrices. Of course, the CPUs have evolved. Now you have uh, dual core CPUs, you have uh, quadra core CPUs, hexa core, and you know, the maximum I believe at this point of time you have is a 16 core CPU. Now, what does 16 core CPU mean? That means each CPU, this was a legacy CPU. Now a 16 core CPU will have 16 cores, which means a CPU can perform 16 operations or 16 executions parallelly. I'm talking if you have a 16 core CPU, then it performs 16 executions or instructions parallelly. On the contrary, if you move to the world of GPU, the highest or the powerful GPU that you have has thousands of cores. So if a CPU has 16 cores at the most, GPUs have thousands of cores. And if you look at NVIDIA's high powerful GPU, it has more than 10,000 cores. So in this case, if you have 100 instructions, so 16 executions on your very high powerful CPU are executed in one batch, then another 16 instructions, another 16 instructions. So that way, imagine how much time your CPU is going to take. Now, similarly, 
instead of 100 instructions, what if you have 10,000 instructions? So CPU is going to take a lot of time in parallel. Now, if you compare GPU, because GPUs have thousands of cores, and if you take high powerful GPU as an example, all these 10,000 instructions can be executed parallelly. So one core of the GPU can take one instruction and they can execute these things parallelly. Not only that, each core, no, in a GPU, each core is basically combination of the processor, which is executing your instruction. And then there is also cache within each core of the GPU. That means all of these cores collectively have a VRAM. Now, what does VRAM means? VRAM is basically a virtual memory. In this case, a CPU also has a cache, but the cache of CPU is usually in MBs. That is also in the lower side of MBs, where if there is something very commonly used within your program, let's say if you are taking this array as an example or matrix as an example, there is some thing that is repeated commonly instead of taking that from the RAM. What a CPU can do is CPU can actually store that information in the cache and it can directly talk to the cache. So the amount of time it requires to fetch the information from RAM is reduced because the information is stored within the cache of the CPU itself. This is very, very less on the lower side of MBs like 10 MB, 15 MB or 50 MB. But if you look at the VRAM, thousands of cores of GPUs, individually each core has some cache. Together, collectively, it can go up to 4 GB. I think this is the most, but subjected to correction, there can be even high powerful GPUs because the space of GPUs is always evolving. There are two providers, NVIDIA and AMD, and you know the GPUs keep upgrading. So it can be even more than this as well. So imagine if a GPU, even without talking to RAM, if it can store up to 4 GB of internal cache. So the calculations or the instructions are computed even more fast. One is it has more number of cores. So if you're talking about multiplication of two matrix where you know each matrix has let's say 100 rows and 100 columns cpu is going to take a lot of time right whereas gpus will perform this particular operation much faster one is because of the number of cores second is because of this distributed cache now you might be thinking abhishek can you explain in more real time rather than such example programs. So to understand in the most simple way, you know, GPUs are initially, I mean, they initially came into picture for image processing, gaming. So let's understand with that. Then let's jump into ML or LLMs so that you can understand better. Let's say you are loading a very high resolution image on your mobile phone or a laptop. This high resolution image or high resolution video usually has a lot of pixels. So it might have some 10,000 of pixels. You're watching a animated movie or you're loading an image for the first time, which is a very high quality in nature. So you might have noticed that your laptop takes some time because the CPU in your laptop renders or loads pixel by pixel when there are 10,000 of pixels. Or sometimes it might load in batches of so pixels. Even then, when you have 10,000 of pixels, then your CPU will take a lot of time because at the most, if you have a hexa core or 16 core CPU, 
it's going to take a lot of time for processing of image that's why when you watch a animated movie or when you are loading a 3d image on your laptop or a high resolution image it takes some time to load and to appear very clearly for you on the laptop whereas if you have gpu you can load this high pixel images very quickly they can be rendered they can be seen very quickly without any latency with low latency right that's the reason why when you are going for gaming laptops or when you want to perform uh, video editing or when you want to uh, watch 3d animation movies a graphic card what is a gpu graphics processing unit so along with the cpu if you have gpus on your laptop then the gaming experience will be much better because in terms of gaming you always have this high pixel images or the videos and that keeps changing so your game has to be processed by the gpus rather than the cpus so this explains that when you have high graphics gpu is required and that's where the evolution of gpu also came into picture now does that mean a gpu can run independently so can you have a laptop only with the gpus no so the heart the brain of your process or the brain of your laptop is still a cpu so cpu is just like a master chef right it takes the information and any program that requires parallel processing is provided to your gpu so your initial program is taken by the cpu and executed by the cpu whenever cpu feels that okay this point of the program or this place of the program requires parallel processing then that is forwarded to the gpu so gpus always run in conjunction or you know parallel with the cpus you cannot have a system only with the gpus okay now how does this actually work in the world of let's say machine learning or uh, large language models because we are all used to chat gpt let me take that as an example you know if we take the text generation feature of chat gpt as an example because we were already talking about the images now let's say we take the text generation feature of chat gpt as an example when you give a prompt to the chat gpt or to the llama model that you are running locally on your machine what happens your prompt is received by these models and these models internally to provide you the prompt response they perform matrix level computations okay it's complicated if you go in depth of it but you can understand in general if you are talking about the data science models or the gpt models they perform matrix level computations that is multiple operations parallel operations only then it can give you the prompt response back now if you want to run this on a cpu imagine you run llama 3 model on your laptop and you give a prompt to the llama 3 model now it has to perform metric level uh, computation where it has to perform a lot of operations to give you a prompt response back definitely it is possible on the cpu as well but these thousands of operations take lot of time on your cpu that's why you will see a delay probably you will get response back in 1 minute or 2 minutes instead if you go to a cloud provider take a gpu on the cloud provider just like what we did in one of our previous videos where i have created a gpu based virtual machine on the hyperstack cloud platform and when i installed llama 3 model on top of it there you might have seen the response is very fast because i have given a prompt 
prompt is taken by the GPU, which has thousands of cores, and all of these operations are executed in some seconds of time because these are large language models. So they have a lot of operations to execute to give the response back. So that's where GPUs come into picture when you are dealing with the models, LLM models or any kind of models that you are trying to deep deal with or even the deep learning related things. Same reason why GPUs are very commonly used. So the point that you have to note, okay, out of the entire video, what you need to remember is first thing, when you need parallel processing, when you feel that you are dealing with any image processing related thing, or when you are dealing with training of models where, you know, you need to train models with related to images or text. Okay? So you need a GPU. And GPUs, basically, you can also buy a GPU based uh, laptop or a GPU based server, but preferably you can go with a cloud platform that provides you the GPU. I'll tell you the reason because GPUs are always evolving. So if you buy a GPU based server, you have to keep it updating yourself. There are only two providers, NVIDIA and AMD. So prefer taking a virtual machine with GPU if you want to learn something and as soon as you learn you can just terminate the instance. Another thing to note is GPUs cannot run without CPUs. So it's always GPU plus CPU. Another important thing that you have to note is there is something called as CUDA which is very very important in our learnings going ahead where it's a architecture that is provided by NVIDIA where as I have mentioned in the GPUs you have thousands of cores and within each core as I have mentioned there is some cache. So this CUDA architecture of NVIDIA provides a way where you can define in your program what kind of data or what should actually be stored in this virtual RAM or the distributed caching. Now, I will make more videos on CUDA where I will also show you by writing a Python program, how you can instruct like, you know, which part of the program has to go to the uh, CPU, which part of program has to go to this uh, particular thing using CUDA, we will try to understand. So this is the video for today. If you have any questions, do let me know in the comment section. Thank you so much for watching the video. Take care everyone. Bye-bye. See you.